The Mario franchise was one of the biggest in the world and has been for many decades. Mario's first proper platformer debuted all the way back to 1985, so he's been around for some time now. The series of games are a true foundation to other video game franchises and even future entries in the Mario series. As a massive fan of the series since 2010, I've played through all of Mario's adventures, whether it's regular platforming, racing, bullshit, or even space. So today I'll be presenting to you as my list on every Mario platformer from worst to best. These must be on the Nintendo console though, so no Mario run. The list will be composed of me describing what's in each game, how I feel about them, and why it's in a certain place on the list. I'll also be comparing a few of these games based on what other entries did and didn't do. Now keep in mind that this list is solely based on my experience with each game, so maybe a few spots might be different to yours. I'll also mention if certain games are objectively better than other games on the list. There will also be no Mario All-Stars because that's a game that includes several entries, so it's not really fair to compare it to the other Mario games. Finally, if you really do care where each game is placed on this list, then keep this in mind. I think all these games are high quality. None of these are necessarily bad. I enjoy each and every one of these in one way or another. All of these are awesome, except... Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels Originally a Japan exclusive for the Famigon and the actual original Super Mario Bros. 2 compared to the rest of the world, this game is awful. It uses the original Mario 1 engine but does some things that I can't really describe. The levels are way more difficult than the original and that's not really a good thing. They're not really fun to play and definitely don't feel like well-made levels. Instead, they feel like fan-made Kaiser-like stages that weren't even playtested. Also, what did they do to the graphics? The clouds have faces now, the ground surprisingly looks worse than the original in my opinion, and having the platforms being covered with mushrooms. They also added the poison mushroom, which was just there to troll the player. Eh, uh, what else? Oh yeah, this castle has a really bad puzzle. Now yes, I have beaten this game once, and it was on my 3DS, but honestly, I wasn't really bothered to play through the entire game again, and it's a really short game. Don't play Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels, it's bad in every way. To get this out of the way, I'll just say that I have more hatred towards new Super Mario Bros. 2 than the Lost Levels, but I couldn't possibly put a game lower than the Lost Levels because it's just not bad. Now new Super Mario Bros. 2, it's bad. It's the third entry to the new Super Mario Bros. series and is without a doubt the worst. First of all, it recycles nearly every single song from new Super Mario Bros. Wii and covers up some of the tracks by just adding some bars. 95% of the levels are just simply unenjoyable, boring and forgettable. For some reason they got rid of the spin drum from Mario Wii which always confused me. The game does not have one interesting theme that shows the identity whatsoever and the fact that it has 6 normal worlds and 2 special worlds. The music that's new to this game includes the shop menu team, a remix of the Super Mario World boss team, the Mushroom World, the Flower World, Star World, the Secret Rainbow levels, and a new remix of the Old World team. So 7 new songs, wow, this sounds decent right? While the Flower World sounds awful and loops after only 10 seconds, this also applies for the Mushroom World as well. The remixes sound fine but aren't really amazing. As I mentioned a minute ago, I don't like the majority of levels but there are some good ones here. There are barely any good levels throughout the normal 6 worlds of the game, but I think the good ones are in the Star World. I like the Nighttime Team level, and I think the idea that they used in the final castle of the game was awesome to expand upon in this castle. Also, can we please talk about their decision on water levels in this game? Like, why do they just fill them up with pipes? It makes them all feel the same and really, really forgettable. There are a few cool teams here, like that one level that has the Tiki-like aesthetic, and that Sky level with the runes. I'll also say it's a big improvement graphically over the DS game, but they kinda had to do that. But yeah, this game definitely does have some nice graphics for a 3DS title. My problem with this game is that it's actually worse than the DS original in so many ways, but at the same time it's just snobbing ideas from the Wii version. Just from looking at some of these level teams, the game could've had so much potential to be distinct and new, but instead it was the most inferior new Super Mario Bros. game. New Super Mario Bros. 2 screams at you to collect coins, which isn't an interesting enough gimmick to revolve a whole game around it. You can't even spend the coins, you just get a trophy on the title screen for getting 1 million coins and a different one for completely maxing out the coin counter. Like sure, if you think this game is good then I'm fine with that but personally it is not for me at all. Objectively, I think it should be higher than other games on the list such as Mario Land, Mario 1 and a few others, but unlike this game, those games are actually fun and replayable. Also, where's the mountain one? I don't think there's much to say about Super Mario Land, but it's definitely a charming little game to say the least. It was Mario's first portable adventure and it definitely has an age well. I think it's definitely the most aged Mario game, but that doesn't mean it's really bad. I don't really come back to this one though. First of all, there's 12 levels in this game, which is not a lot at all. Also, this game is weird. 
Koopas blow up when you step on them and the fire flower is way more different with its projectiles than it is normally. One thing that's good about this game though is its music. I love the overall theme because of how good it sounds, Chai Kingdom represents the levels well and the credits sound phenomenal and one of my favourite credit themes. The soundtrack is really underrated and is definitely worth a listen. Super Mario Land is a fun game but there's definitely more fun Mario games to enjoy. People definitely like this game more than me. Super Mario Bros. 2 is a reskin and altered version of Doki Doki Panic. We got this game instead of the lost levels because they thought the rest of the world would think it was too difficult, so we got this instead. Super Mario Bros. 2 is a very interesting game in the Mario series. Instead of jumping on enemies to kill them or using a power up, you grab objects out of the ground to attack them or just straight up throw them yourself. I think this style of gameplay is cool and definitely makes it stick out among the rest of the Mario games. You can also pick between four characters including Mario, Luigi, Peach and Toad and each of these having unique perks to their moveset. Mario being unaltered, Luigi having a high jump but is slippery, Peach having the ability to float but is the slowest out of the lot and Toad being the fastest with the worst jump. This adds a layer of strategy into the game because you could see which character is the best for you. Having this one addition is so cool and one of the big highlights of the game. My problem with this game is definitely the levels. They're not all designed poorly, but it's just that they're really unpolished and some are just really annoying to play, especially the ones that you need to use bombs to advance in. At the end of these levels, there's boss fight which is generally repeated throughout the game and adding a layer of difficulty as you progress further. I don't really like the bosses in this game, and especially this boss because it's really unpolished because of the level design. Also, instead of a flagpole at the end, you enter a bird's mouth which is different to say the least. The music is also good in this game. I like the old world and character select teams especially. Overall, Super Mario Bros. 2 is a kill spin on the Mario formula, but could be way more fun if the levels were more polished and better designed. I recommend to give this one a go though, just to see what you think of it. It's a good game but doesn't really compare to most other entries. Whenever I hear of classic video games, Super Mario Bros. 1 is the first one to pop into my head. Being the first game of this list, I believe Super Mario Bros. 1 has held up significantly. The levels are still fun and memorable, the music is timeless and the controls are still somewhat decent. I prefer this game over Super Mario Bros. 2 because of the levels and the format mostly. Mario 1's format for platforming is so good that it's still used decades later. The levels are balanced and a blast to speed through. My problem with this game is mostly the controls and some other features. So first of all, why can't we go back in levels? It always made them feel a bit more confined than they needed to be. The controls are good and functional, but Mario is quite stiff whenever you're moving vertically, whether that's jumping or falling. I also think getting hit while using the fire power up and taking you all the way back down to small Mario is very, very annoying. Overall though, Super Mario Bros. is an awesome game that started a near perfect series of video games. If you haven't played this game, then you're definitely missing out on some fun. Also, this game saved the video game industry, which is saying a lot. New Super Mario Bros. U is often criticised for being underwhelming and it's clear to see why. It's probably the most polished 2D Mario game ever made and in my opinion it looks even nicer than 3D World. The visuals look so clean but that's expected considering it was the first HD Mario game. My biggest problem with this game is that its potential felt even more wasted than New Super Mario Bros. 2. The fact that they had some interesting ideas that worked with this game, but surely abandoned them after, was quite prevalent throughout. The biggest example of this is the brand new level team that was inspired by Van Gogh's paintings. Unfortunately, this is in one level and is never seen again. What annoys me about this is the fact it's just wasted potential. Most of World 5 could have been used in this style, but nope. Moving on to the story, it's definitely the most interesting of the new Super Mario Bros. series. Bowser captures Peach's castle and throws Mario and the others to a distant land. Now does this lead you to a new and never seen world? Maybe it's lava and the game could be gone backwards instead of forward. Well at least I got the never seen world part right. Oh, look at this, it's another grassland. This is another thing that proves that Mario U wastes so much potential. I like the idea of capturing Peach's castle and throwing Mario on the gangway, but it could have been so much cooler. Now, I'll say this, the new Acorn 2 is very good I think. It's an alternate version of the Cave Rider I believe, because you could glide but you could only get one boost. I also appreciate that there's at least Boom Boom in the tower levels instead of the Koopling battles. So overall, New Super Mario Bros. U could be considered the best New Super Mario Bros. game, but for me it's just a fun game that had missing potential.
Mario Land 2 is probably one of the biggest leaps for a sequel. Mario Land 1 was fine but it was so limited in every way. Mario Land 2 now is a completely different story. The graphics are way more refined and just straight up look nicer. There's a world map now and everything is just way nicer. I love that Mario sprite looks like the Mario World one and that is not a single pixel on the screen now. I think the style on how you progress in this game is genius. You can do these zones in any order you want. It's sort of like Mario 64 took inspiration from this with its style of progression. The zones also have such diverse and cool themes. There's a zone where you're simply climbing up a tree, but then there's a zone where a turtle straight up eats you and you go inside of them. There's also a space zone which they need to bring back into future 2D Mario games. A pumpkin zone that's ghost themed. A zone where you're shrunk down into something as small as bugs, where you navigate around a big house. And finally, there's Mario zone, where you go into a massive robot Mario, which has a level that's located on his crotch, and the level consists of balls. Yeah, Nintendo went all out here. Sure the levels aren't that good, but with the fun teams and designs to them, I think it makes up for it. There's also a new power up called the carrot where you could turn into Bunny Mario. It's the raccoon suit without the flying and the tail whip, so you could just flow. The main villain here is Wario, and I believe this was the debut to his character. Each sound I mentioned earlier consists of a golden coin. Collect all of them and you play the final castle against Wario. Mario Land 2 is a healthy mix of novelty and familiarity. It has some awesome new ideas, but doesn't take them too far. It's obscure but still feels like Mario. If someone asked for an old 2D Mario game to compare to the new Super Mario Bros. series with and show how the old ones are better, then I would show this game. The creativity in this game should not be taken for granted and should be used for future entries in the series. Play Super Mario Land 2, it's an underrated classic. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is a crafted and fun 2D Mario adventure. I prefer this game over Super Mario Land 2 and New Super Mario Bros. U because New Super Mario Bros. Wii has some amazing levels throughout the game. I also just prefer this game over the Wii U version. I don't know why I think this way but I do. Maybe because the game was newer, thus I expected it to be better. Anyways, Mario Bros. Wii is a very standard Mario game. It doesn't do anything particularly special but what it does have is good. Firstly, I'll admit that yes, this game is very bland because it doesn't really do anything that makes it special. It's the least colourful new Super Mario Bros. game which I don't really mind. The parts of this game that I don't really like are the Kooplings. It would be cool to just have them in the castle and then maybe fight Bowser Jr or new bosses in the tower levels. Level design isn't that involved for a while but the levels definitely do get better after World 5. World 1 has some decent levels but it drops in quality from World 2 to 5 which has a lot of levels. Once World 6 comes around the game gets way more fun. I also feel like the worlds are way more immersive than the new Super Mario Bros. U. The new power ups are awesome as well. The music in this game might be a bit repetitive but I think it's good. World 7 and 9 sound really good but that final Bowser song and that battle is just so good. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is very basic but it's fun to play. It would have been way better if there was more ideas for teams and more music instead of just repeating the same song. But there's more positives than negatives here so that's why I think it's higher than the other Mario games on the list. I don't know what I wanted to do with this in 3D World. Both games are great but in the end I put 3D Land at number 12 which I didn't really want to do but I realised that 3D World was just a better game. Now Super Mario 3D Land is probably the most underappreciated Mario game out there from what I've seen. This game has some amazing level design. Sure it's simplistic but with a mix of strange teams and polished design it makes levels fun and replayable. The main theme with this game is the Tanooka Leaf from Super Mario Bros. 3 and honestly it was implemented in the wrong way. So they got rid of the ability to fly. Do I need to say more? The soundtrack is great with many catchy tunes and some were even brought over to 3D World. I think it's the worst soundtrack out of all the 3D Mario games which shows how good the rest of them are considering that this one is still great. I know this game isn't too original but it's definitely not bland. This game also looks really colourful and vibrant which adds to the experience. One major complaint I have here is definitely the controls are way more limited than they've ever been. Mario's long jump has been nerfed to death here and in terms of other moves there's not much here. Aside from that, 3D Land is a good time to have with a few flaws drawn in there. Also, you can unlock 8 special worlds. Alright, the game's been redeemed. <laughs> Super Mario 3D World is the Mario game that I just didn't like for the past 5 years of my life. I'm not sure why I didn't like this entry. Like sure, it's not the best 3D Mario game, but it's definitely more thought out than the new Super Mario Bros. games which I defended for so long. So what changed my mind? Yes, it was obviously the addition of the dive that was added to the Switch port. No, the game just kinda grew on me. As I appreciated my Odyssey more, it was the same case with this one. So, what is good about this game? The level design is top notch alongside 3D Land, the teams are diverse, and many levels are memorable. I probably prefer 3D Land for a while because of the more toy feeling levels that correlate with the controls of the game. Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U is slow. 
Todd is really the only one here who's somewhat fast. But on the Switch port, the controls have been increased by 30% and they feel so much better. Using Code is so fun because he just speeds through all these levels without any hesitation. 3D Land wasn't a fast Mario game, but with the Tanuki power up and small level design, it felt like you were going through the levels quite fast, which I really liked. This experience can now be felt on the Switch port, which was just really necessary, I think. Also, can I just say that some parts of this game look quite nice? Look at the grass levels especially. I might be saying a controversial opinion here, but there are some parts of 3D World that do look better than Odyssey. Not saying Odyssey looks bad, but I think 3D World's art style is more appealing in some ways. Now, there are a couple of flaws about this game. I find a lot of the gameplay to be, well, a bit lackluster. It's not bad, but I feel way more invested in every other 3D Mario game. I also still have that one thing that's making me dislike this game more than it should be. I can't really describe what it is, but it's definitely something. Also, I'll just say that Mario's model isn't that nice looking. He just has this really red look to him. This game has a strange lighting effect that makes everything look tacky and in some cases unattractive in my opinion. I kinda have a problem with the visuals of the modern 3D Mario games. Like, I think that 3D World is a bit too flashy with its graphics and lighting, but on the flip side, Odyssey is a bit too dull with its lighting. So yeah, I think modern Mario games could look a bit nicer. Don't come at me saying that I hate 3D World because of that. I know I mentioned that some parts of this game look amazing, and that's true, but I can't help it to not show that this game looks very plasticky a lot of the time. So yeah, Super Mario 3D World is a big spike for me, but I definitely like it more than I used to. Also, this is a very good multiplayer game. I haven't played too much of it, but what I did play was a blast. When I played the two player online, it sadly was lagging a bit, but it was still fun. So yeah, 3D World's a pretty good game. Like Super Mario Bros. 2, many people like Super Mario Bros. 3 a lot more than I do. Now look, I have respect for Mario 3, but I don't love the game. To start off positive, I'll say that the new power-ups are very good, the addition of the world map was amazing, and it's a fun game to sit down and mess around in. I'll also say it controls much better than Mario 1 in every way. Now it's time for the complaining. The levels aren't memorable to me personally because of their design. The music isn't amazing if I had to be honest, and since it was on the NES, it hasn't really aged that well in my eyes compared to the first game. I think it's like this since it has more ideas, so it's harder to keep that level of quality for a period of time. Now it just sounds like I described Mario 3 like it's an awful experience, but that's not true. The problems I mentioned earlier are the roadblocks to an amazing game. Where I stand with Mario 3 now, it's still very good. It's a fast paced 2D Mario adventure that has so many fun quirks that shouldn't be taken for granted. The warp whistle is a cool addition alongside the map as previously mentioned. Power ups like the raccoon leaf, hammer suit and the frog suit are fun and unique. Maybe not the frog suit. Another problem I have with this game is that you can't replay levels or go back to past worlds. This level of limitation was fixed in Mario World though. And that's all I have to say about Mario 3. The game is a blast, but with quite a few flaws blocking it from being my favourite 2D Mario game. Ah, uh, good old new Super Mario Brothers. This was my first ever Mario game, and as time went on, I seemed to like it a bit more. When I played this when I was younger, I thought the graphics were really ugly, and the game sucked because there was no flying power-ups. But nowadays, it stands as one of the best 2D Mario games for me. To start off, yes, Mario is extremely pixelated, but that's solely because of the hardware I was on. The rest of the game has this vibrant and sort of vivid tone to the looks and aesthetic. I will admit that this game feels a bit bland, considering it uses 8 teams we all know and sort of like, but I don't mind it with this entry, considering it introduced future 2D Mario games to all these teams. Whether it's good or bad, it should still be known that this game does a lot for a 2D Mario game. First of all, the levels are some of my favourites. Sure, there's some bad ones like the eel monster level, but the majority are good. Also, I feel like this doesn't really fit in with the rest of the new Super Mario Bros. games. I know that sounds completely insane considering it started the series, but I have reasons why. The graphics might be the worst out of all of them, but considering that it looks a bit different to the rest of them, it makes it visually distinct. The only two songs I could think that they nabbed from this game were the Overworld and Athletic Team. The rest of the game has original music that hasn't been recycled. This is another reason why I think the game is more distinct. This entry also introduced wall jumping, ground pounding and all around a more smooth moveset over the classic games. They added power ups here such as the blue shell, mini mushroom and mega mushroom. The two new mushrooms aren't that cool in my opinion but I'm definitely a fan of the blue shell. There's another thing that makes this game stand out and that's the unique bosses in every castle. There's no couplings to be found. And yes, Bowser Jr is repeated in every tower, but I don't really mind this since they try to make it more difficult as time progresses. The final boss is underwhelming, but it's not that bad. All in all, New Super Mario Bros is a fantastic game with creative ideas planted into the castle bosses and brought 2D Mario into a modern stage. Play this game if you want a solid 2D Mario adventure. After the disappointing 3D All-Stars release, Super Mario 3D World was ported to the Switch with an expansion mode called Bowser's Fury. Bowser's Fury is one massive open world level that has Fury Bowser come out after a period of time. He could scare him off by collecting a catch shine or fight him by using the Gigabell. 
This style of gameplay is something that we've never seen before in a Mario game and I think it's really good. I love the style of Mario 64, Sunshine and Odyssey so when I played this I was kind of blown away. As I mentioned earlier, there are cat giants in this game and if you collect a certain amount of them depending on what stage of the game you're in, the Giga Bell will be unlocked and you can grow big to fight Bowser. The reason why I think this style of gameplay is so fun is you never slow down so it's always non-stop platforming. The moveset is retained from 3D World which isn't that great considering it's one of the most limited movesets but it's still functional. This would also be higher on the list if it wasn't so short. Yes, this is basically one big demo. It's not all that long. But I definitely think this game is quality over quantity in terms of the cat shines. Not once did I dread searching for one, unlike another game on the same console. So yeah, Bowser's Fury is definitely the building blocks for some big project and I'm very excited. The style of Bowser's Fury isn't the best out there compared to other Mario games, but still very good. Also, I need to mention that this is one of the most enjoyable games to look at during the cutscenes. It's not as funny as Sunshine's, but it's definitely more comedic over the other 3D Mario games. The music in this game is also great, and riding Plessy is really smooth and precise. Also, when your cat Mario and the cats come up to you, it's just kind of adorable. I won't talk too much about this entry considering that the original Mario 64 will be higher on the list, so here's the deal. Super Mario 64 DS is arguably better than the original. There is way more content, more playable characters and minigames. Wow, this sounds like it completely outshines the original, right? Well, sort of. Yes, the added content is great and simply just the thought of playing as Wario is what dreams are made of, but I have one big flaw with this game. I'll discuss this later on, but one reason why Mario 64 is so fun is because of the smooth controls. Mario 64 DS controls way worse in my opinion. You use the D-pad instead of an analog stick which just doesn't work. Like, it's not necessarily bad, but comparing the two games' controls, it's not even a debate in my opinion. It saddens me honestly because Mario 64 DS is an absolutely amazing game. If the controls were just better, then it would skyrocket up the list. Sadly, the game is kept on the DS with these controls. Now, I'll briefly describe the minigames. These are perfection. That minigame where you create trampolines with the touchscreen was my way of envisioning that this was the future. There's also that wanted minigame that was very addicting because you always wanted to beat your high scores and then of course we have the best ones of all, the Luigi gambling games. Yeah, 10 years after originally playing this and my gambling addiction still hasn't been cured. <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey, the game that no one hated, the game that was the evolution of 3D Mario, the game that was flawless. Yeah, I fucking hated this game. I don't know why this was the case, but playing through this game again made me realise what I'd been missing out on for the past four years. Odyssey is a big adventure crafted with love and creativity. The game is massive with so many things to do. There's over 900 power moons to collect, which will bring the player hours of enjoyment, but this is where my main flaw with Odyssey comes in. I believe that this game is quantity over quality with the moons. So many are repeated, which is fine, but these repeated ones are just so boring. Honestly, if the game stripped all the bad moons, it would be significantly shorter, which would make it way more enjoyable, I think. I enjoyed it more in my second run because it didn't 100% the game, but instead bet the normal story. It made collecting moons so much more fun because it just went for the good ones. Now apart from the moons, I'll have to say that this game has absolute godlike controls. Mario feels so fluid, precise and smooth to manoeuvre around and has a sense of control in any scenario, which I adore. The music is absolutely sensational and some tracks even match up to Galaxy soundtrack in terms of quality. The levels have new and creative themes which is really nice to see I think. But the newest addition is something I haven't even brought up yet. Cappy is a hat that's used alongside Mario's moveset, but the big feature you can do with Cappy is capture enemies and objects. Yes, this is the main theme of Mario Odyssey, and it's a really fresh take on Mario. I gotta be honest though, most of these captures can only be used in certain parts of the game, so it's less of a power-up and more so of a temporary ability. So I kinda do miss the power-ups. The boss fights are just alright in my opinion, nothing really mind-blowing. But if there's one fight that will go down in history as one of Mario's greatest bosses, it's the final Bowser battle where you capture Bowser. It's just perfection. I mentioned earlier that this game is a bit too dull. Maybe dull is the wrong word, but it's kind of the opposite of 3D World, which was a bit too flashy, I think. I just think that this game's art style isn't that great. Look at the skybox here. Why is it so blurry? I don't expect this from a 2017 game, especially when Galaxy and 3D World did it much better. Anyways, I could go on about Odyssey, but I don't really need it. The game is amazing, with flaws that could be bypassed by just not 100%ing the game. I believe that this is one of the best Mario games objectively, but it's not my top pick. Give Odyssey a shot if you haven't already, it's incredible. Yes! Super Mario Sunshine is a very broken video game. There's parts of this game where you think it wasn't even play tested. What examples are there?
Apart from the broken parts of this game, the rest is just so good. Mario's moveset is even better than Odyssey's in my opinion. It might not be as polished, but it's really satisfying to control Mario. The levels in this game are some of my favourites from any Mario game. Bianca was a great starting level, Peanut Park is creative with its design and theme, Serena Beach has you never gain parts of a hotel, and Nogi Bay is probably my favourite level from any video game. The music that accompanies these levels is also perfection. Gelato Beach, Serena Beach and Delfino Plaza feel tropical, while Rico Harbour and Pianta Village have more of an aggressive sound to them. All of the levels have some sort of connection to one another. For example, if you're on Gelato Beach, you can see Peanut Park and Rico Harbour. The secret levels might be broken and unpolished, but they're a cool challenge that fits into the game in my opinion. Also, a lot of people might disagree with me on this, but I think the sky and sea levels are awesome. The levels might be broken, but the music, scenery and atmosphere is really calming and tranquil. Flood's also a new addition to this game and works wonders. I think getting rid of the long jump for this is worth it, solely because of the versatility Flood brings. Like if you spray the ground and dive into it, you get a massive boost of speed. Like, this is already better than the long jump. Delfina Plaza has to be the best hub world from any 3D Mario game, no questions asked. I couldn't forget about Sunshine's best feature though, the cutscenes. These cutscenes definitely give the game its identity, that's for sure. I find them more comedic than weird, so I do hope we get more of... Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! And... Oh, we also can't forget about... Mario's a bully, he never fights fair. Overall, Super Mario Sunshine is objectively one of the worst 3D Mario games because of how broken some parts are, and that's definitely very unpolished. But who cares if it's unpolished because this is one of the most fun Mario games to play. Give Sunshine a go if you want to see bullshit. I don't have too much to say about Super Mario World other than it's the game that perfected what the NES games did. The world map is interconnected now and you're able to replay any level. The Cape Feather was introduced here and it's probably one of my favourite power ups in any Mario game. Yoshi also makes his character debut here and works wonders and the music is just perfect for this game. Graphically, this game still looks amazing and has aged much better than any other Mario game that came before the 2000s. And yes, that includes Mario 64 as well. The art style is 16-bit bliss that is vibrant and colourful but doesn't look too flashy. I'd really like to see them reuse these graphics in a future entry. This game is filled with secret exits. They create alternate paths compared to where you're supposed to go which make the levels feel even bigger than they actually are. Speaking about secrets, what do you do with these Yoshi coins? Unlike Star coins, these serve no purpose. You could get a 1-up if you collect them all, but that's it. There's these new Switch Palaces which activate these blocks depending on what colour they are, which hasn't really been brought back in the future Mario game. But yeah, Super Mario World is a true classic that stands the test of time better than many other Mario games. Definitely a 2D masterpiece. <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy 2 is an expertly crafted 3D platformer that has you making hundreds of decisions every moment you play this game. The levels are far more linear than the original, but that's not really bad, it's just kinda different. The galaxies in this game are excellent and contain a lot of fun platforming. You can access all these levels way easier compared to the original game, but I still prefer the original style. The hub world in this game is tiny, with nothing really to do, which isn't really a problem honestly. New power-ups here include the rock mushroom, spindrel and cloud flower. These are fine, but the only one I'd really want to use would be the cloud flower. I find this game to be very hit and miss throughout. Like you have levels like Sky Station and Puzzle Blank, but then you have <coughs> I'll also say there's so much filler here. World S has three galaxies that are like this. There's other things that just make this worse than the original and one of those things is the story. This might be pushing it a little bit, but this is the worst Mario story of all time. I hate it because it pretends that the first one never happened, which I really despise. Galaxy 1's story is done so well and has so much emotion put into it, so when I see Galaxy 2 completely dishonor it, I just don't really like it. Despite my comments about how this game is flawed, there's one thing that stays quality throughout, the music. All I can say is Flip Swap isn't that great, Space Storm isn't that good, and Cloudy Court is a bit overrated, but the rest is just amazing. Never ask me which soundtrack is better, this or Galaxy 1's, I just can never answer that question. Oh yeah, and there's Yoshi. And that's all for Galaxy 2. Although containing the filler, it's still a masterpiece in many ways and will go down as a 3D classic, but there's an even better one. I'll say it right now, this is objectively better than any other Mario game in my opinion, and here's why. Super Mario Galaxy took everything 3D Mario had previously and cranked it up to absolute perfection. Sure the movement isn't as fun as Mario Sunshine, but that doesn't really matter. The levels are amazing throughout the entire game with the ideas just coming in one after the other. The music and story are also just perfection, each song fitting every level perfectly while making the player know what type of scenario they're in. The story is far more serious than the other games in the series, especially after Sunshine. 
That ending cutscene gives me chills, and it's the same for when Mario screams. Welcome! Welcome, New Galaxy! Moving on to the visuals, oh my god. I believe that Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are some of the most beautiful video games of all time. The art style is the perfect mix of realistic visuals and cartoon-like graphics. Also, as a person who's just admired by space, it definitely lends to the look. I don't think one Galaxy game looks better than the other because they both have the same general look. But in terms of atmosphere, the first game wins. The opening shot of Gateway shows what you're in for. When I think of the term eye candy, this game comes to mind. It will be a very difficult challenge to overtake the Galaxy games visuals and atmosphere for future games. I could go on about how good this game is for hours, but as I said at the start of this video, this isn't really going by objectively better games, but which games I enjoyed more, so let's move on. Check this out. Whoa! What am I, a monkey? Ah! It's been a long ride to get here. I tried to describe each of these well made games in enough detail and why I taught them. I know that I was harsh on some games compared to others but remember that these games are all top tier. Uh, not these. Now if you got me to pick one game out of all 20 of these, I would pick Super Mario 64 without a doubt. I'll go over the bad things quickly. The camera isn't that good. Levels like Rainbow Ride and TikTok Clock can be annoying and the game hasn't aged as well as other Mario games. Now with that off my chest, here's why this game is number one. The majority of levels are an absolute blast to navigate around and it never gets old. Bob and Battlefield is my second home basically. These are filled with well thought out star locations and tasks so the player won't get bored. The controls are also still really good in my opinion. I love how free Mario feels moving around all these levels and even the castle. Also the dive is a nerf like 3D World and Odyssey. Mario 64's music is timeless and very catchy. I love all these songs except for... The soundtrack might not top galaxies, but songs like File Select, Dire Dire Docks and Staff Roll definitely do. Graphically, it's the worst looking 3D Mario game, but I don't really care at that stage because of how distinct it looks. The weird muddy textures still look cool to this day in my eyes. Also Mario in this game and on the box art are two Marios that are perfect in every single way. The in-game model might be blocky, but it's just so awesome looking and distinct. The promo art version might be a bit aged, but it's charming to see what Mario looked like in 3D for the first time. Also, the consistency between levels is paced just right I think. Bob and Battlefield and Womp's Fortress are great beginner levels. Kuku Mountain and Jolly Roger Bay introduce new mechanics like swimming and slides but also increases the difficulty. And then there's the first Bowser stage which is done just right in my opinion. Mario 64's style of gameplay is definitely my favourite out of the entire series. This is why I prefer over Galaxy 1. Super Mario 64 isn't a perfect game, but it is to me. The creativity and levels blend perfectly with the moveset and music. The secrets are put in good spots and the stars are quality over quantity in my eyes compared to another Mario game. I know many are repeated, but they all do feel distinct. For example, all the red coin stars have the same objective, but because of how different each level is, it executes in a way that makes each star distinct. The Bowser fights are also some of my favourites and the mini bosses are also quite cool. If there's one game everyone in the world needs to play, it's Mario 64. Super Mario 64 isn't my favourite game because of the art style, levels in the game, moves that you performed, creativity used, bosses that were fought or the music that was listened to, but Mario 64 is my favourite game because it's just so fun. F*** the end of the stars. And there you go. That's my opinion on every Mario game and where I rank them. I really enjoyed ranking all these games, and it made me appreciate the Mario series even more. As time goes on, Mario games will keep getting released. We don't know how many Mario games there will be in 30 years. All we know now is that there's 20. And one masterpiece. <laughs>